here's where we can bring Churchill <laughs> back in. He wrote a, the, my point was the uh, costs seldom outweigh the potential benefits. Uh, September 1st of 1939, Hitler goes to reunite a 95% German city, Danzig. Uh, Danzig that's according yeah. to Encyclopedia Britannica. It was 95% German at the time. So he uh, invaded Poland. On September 3rd, Neville Chamberlain, who we're told is like this dumb dove who never did anything, Neville Chamberlain <laughs> declares war against National Socialist Germany as a result of this invasion because they promised to give a war guarantee to Poland. It was not a war guarantee because the Soviets invaded on September 17th of that year, and there was no declaration of war against the Soviets. It was trying to provoke a war right. uh, with Germany. So notice the independence of Britain is already violated. The decision to go to war for Britain is now put in the hands of Polish colonels. That's a violation of independence if I have ever seen one. So the war ends and Churchill doesn't just thank everyone for all the taxes and apologize for all the deaths and how we could have done this peacefully. He says on page three, the, the preface of uh, his first Second World uh, War memoir, he says, the human tragedy reaches its climax in the fact that after all the exertions and sacrifices of hundreds of millions of people and the victories of the righteous cause, we have found neither peace or security, and we lie in the grip of even worse perils than those we have surmounted, meaning we declared a war for Polish independence. You can read the text of Chamberlain's declaration. Poland then ends up under Soviet occupation. Churchill brings this up to Stalin at the Yalta meeting. He says, look, we fought a war for Polish independence. Eight million Poles have been killed from that favor we were doing them. Can we have elections in Poland, you got to host those, to which Stalin says, oh, free elections like in British-occupied Egypt. And that was Stalin's response to Churchill. This is according to a book titled Stalin's War by uh, Sean McMeekin. So that was uh, just looking at the costs and benefits, not to mention the Soviets occupied uh, half of Europe. Uh, on the East. So that is just looking at Churchill, who, by the way, Churchill was not elected. Chamberlain was elected and then kicked out after the Narvik debacle. So the fight for democracy had unelected Winston Churchill, unelected Joseph Stalin, and like 20 term President Roosevelt. Oh, right, right. It was four terms. So uh, it, it, I'm going to stop there and see if you have to comment on anything. Well, it just, I, this Churchill myth is so deadly. People say, oh, he's a hero. The modern day Churchill is this guy. So let's just follow him and do whatever he does. Well, it does seem like the idea of democracy has become the modern justification for statism in general. And look, I, I think that if you look at it from kind of a more broader, you know, reaching perspective from pre-democratic norms up until today, you'll get a clearer picture of what the state really is. So, you you know, like today, people kind of cling to democracy as this thing that makes the state legitimate. But even like today, you know, look, Kamala Harris, at, it, is she where she is because of some democratic norm? You know, no. I mean, I, I don't know. The whole uh, democratic primary, just on, on the side of the capital D, Democratic Party, was, no, they wouldn't even allow a real, you know, democratic process. And they just, but then you'll hear people today, like 18 million people voted for, you know, Joe Biden. You're like, okay, well, I, I thought you told me 75 million people voted for him. Okay, whatever. But they voted for him. Eh, some people within his party decided he was too old and they kicked him out. Seymour Hirsch has written a really interesting piece about this lately. So, okay. But so democracy has nothing to do, with, but really you'll recognize democracy has nothing to do with anything. This is all just an excuse for why it is okay that this government rules over you. And particularly if you look at governments of the past, obviously it's, it's uh, it has nothing to do with it. It's just that these were the strongest people with the most guns and they were able to take control of their people. That's all it is.
democracy is the sales pitch that works. And the way yeah. they really get their sales pitch was summarized perfectly by Thomas Sowell when he said, these issues are seldom, if ever, discussed uh, empirically or economically or on principle. What people are looking for are uh, people to vilify and hate and uh, heroes to admire. So that's why the Churchill myth gets so heavily circulated. It was the Churchill cabinet, which on May 15th of 1940, initiated the bombing of civilians in Germany, and the Blitz didn't happen until September of 1940. So... This policy was summarized by a science advisor to the war government, Charles Percy Snow. Uh, he gave a series of lectures at Harvard uh, called Science and Government. And here's how Snow summarized the paper. The paper on bombing went out to top government official scientists. It described in quantitative terms the effect on Germany of a British bombing offensive in the next 18 months. The paper laid down strategic policy. The bombing must be directed essentially against German working class houses. Middle class houses have too much space around them and so are bound to waste bombs. Factories and military objectives had long since been forgotten, except in official bulletins, since they were much too difficult to find. The paper claimed that given a total concentration of effort on the production and use of bombing aircraft, it would be possible in larger towns of Germany, those with 50,000 inhabitants, to destroy 50% of all houses. These are the fighters for democracy. They are so worried that you won't get a 1 in 10 million vote to determine which liar sits on the throne next constantly justifying mass murder. This is the actions of the heroes of democracy. I'm not even pointing to, well, yeah. Napoleon did, well, actually Napoleon was after the French Revolution for liberty, equality, and fraternity. So whoever they think the villains are, are, let's just say villainous, the heroes of democracy are constantly engaging in the most evil crimes. There's a book titled The Complete War Memoirs of Charles de Gaulle, where he actually says that Winston Churchill one night was shaking his fist at the sky saying, why won't they come? De Gaulle looks at Churchill and says, are you really, uh, <laughs> are you not having any patience to see your cities get destroyed? To which Churchill responds, according to Charles de Gaulle, you don't get it. Once the Americans see Oxford and Coventry getting bombed, they'll have to come in. The state will even justify the mass murder of its own civilian population, which it pledges allegiance to defend. They will justify them getting killed. The case is with Pearl Harbor. The case is with uh, the British uh, getting bombed. Uh, Churchill even authorized Operation Catapult, which was killing 1,200 French servicemen. Um, in, and his justification at the International Churchill Society is, well, if we didn't kill him, those subs might have gotten in German hands. So th these are the crimes that people will justify uh, engaging in when they have a legal monopoly on printing money, conscripting people, and they control the education system, which is how they're able to hide these things for so long.